another edition of Pritch Brand Talk. I'm delighted to have with me today Abhishek Gupta. He's the Chief Marketing Officer at Edelweiss Tokyo Life Insurance. As you all know, this is the most critical period for anybody in the BFSI sector, the Jan Feb March quarter, and especially for the insurance sector, with March being a significant month for them. I'm really glad that Abhishek could take our time out from his busy schedule to speak to us. So, Abhishek, welcome to Pitch Brand Talk. Thank you. Thank you, Simran. Thank you so much for having me on this platform. It's a pleasure to be here. Abhishek, I just want to start first with, you know, the Zindagi Unlimited campaign, which has been part of uh, uh, Edelweiss Tokyo Life Insurance Band philosophy for many years now. How has this initiative helped build brand salience for the brand? So, uh, Sivan, Zindagi Unlimited uh, is uh, uh, not a campaign for us. It's our, uh, what do we stand for? It's our proposition hmm. of Typically in marketing parlance, what we call it is, it is the positioning for the brand. Uh, essentially, uh, it stems from that insight that all of us have uh, ambitions in our lives. You, me, uh, the person on the street, even India's richest person, we all have ambitions in our lives, right? Uh, we all have aspirations in our lives. And to meet these aspirations, we have some resources or means available to us. This means could be in terms of money, it could be in terms of time, it could be in terms of health, it could be anything. But there are some means available to us to meet these aspirations. Um, you know, the good part about life or probably a sad part about our life is that there's always a gap. Aspirations are here uh, and means are here. There's always this gap. Now, why I'm saying it is a good thing because uh, this is what keeps us going. It is what probably uh, drives us. It is what uh, makes up, uh, get up in the morning and uh, run towards our aspirations and move towards our aspirations. We call these gaps as limits. Okay, these are the limits which are holding us back. And at Edelweiss Tokyo Life Insurance, we say that uh, while we cannot claim to fully remove the limit, I don't think nobody in the universe can claim to fully remove the limits. But uh, what we want to tell our clients, our distributors is that through our products, through our services, through our offerings, we can help you in reducing these limitations. And once you have reduced these limitations, you can move towards a Zindagi which is unlimited and therefore Zindagi unlimited. That is the thought behind this uh, positioning. Uh, for us, it actually is a very sweet spot. Number one, it itself has Zindagi in it and we are into life insurance. Life insurance is all about Zindagi. So it fits over there. Uh, more important is, uh, you know, it enables us to uh, create meaningful propositions uh, to the targeted, it could be either be customers, it could be either be distributors, it could either be employees or anybody else through one singular platform because everybody has limitations in their lives. So what we can do is, so therefore, if you know, if typical, if I speak in typical marketing language, there's one thing that brings in consistency of communication in our life and which is that hook, which is in the unlimited. So that has been very good for us from a brand perspective. But more than brand, nah, Zindagi Unlimited has become ingrained across our organization. Okay. So we actually tell our customers, go live your life unlimited. And uh, whenever we are looking at a problem, we look at problems as limits. And then we look at how can we reduce those limits fully well aware that we are not looking at removing the limits, we are only reducing the limits. So I think it's a sweet spot. And uh, to arrive at a sweet spot in a crowded life insurance industry, which has 24 plus players, was very difficult, especially uh, to a very late entrant. Private life insurance industry started in 2000 and we started business in 2012-13. So you are anyway fairly late to the business from a private life insurance perspective. Still then being able to find a sweet spot, I think has done very well for us. A striking part of your communication is that you have a woman who at the center of your communication. She's the protagonist and she's also the solution provider. 
what was the insight behind this? Because, you know, when we look at insurance, primarily, I believe that most of the buyers are men. So what was the uh, insight behind this? So uh, let me give you a data point. Uh, of all the life insurance advisors uh, registered with all insurance companies put together, approximately 27 to 28% of them are women. Okay. okay. So that means women form, and I'm probably talking a data which is almost two years old. So it is quite possible that percentage would have improved. So women already increased, yes. So women already form a substantial part of the seller's network already. Already, right? Uh, so that is from the supply side. Now look, you look at from the demand side. Uh, well, yes, 60-70% uh, of insurance is bought by men. Okay. But women play a huge role as an influencer over here. Okay. So if you see women either in their roles as an influencer or a direct buyer or a seller of the insurance, they are present throughout this journey. So that was one part. Second part, as I was telling you earlier, we are a late entrant in this industry and we realized that we needed something which number one, we are passionate about. Number two, which resonates with the industry. And third is probably, a, again, putting on a marketing hat is a greenfield available, is a stand that you can take. If I club it all three, uh, using women as a protagonist actually was a fairly uh, easy decision to make for us. Uh, in fact, uh, our first campaign uh, way back in 2013 uh, showed female advisors, okay, uh, which till that time nobody had done. So we were the first one to start using female as an advisor. And also, uh, let me be honest, Simran, as anything, day one say we started thinking that we will go women as a protagonist. It's a, it's a part of the evolution of the brand. Um, 2015, we had got, uh, we got Saina Nehwal is our brand ambassador. Uh, and that got us thinking uh, that India has so much wonderful stories about women who, in spite of the boundaries, the conditions, the limits placed on them, they are moving ahead. People like you who are making a name for themselves in field, which earlier was probably reserved for men. A lot of this, we thought that why don't we become not a champion, but probably an enabler for all this. So after that, we took a conscious call ki in almost all our communication, either the protagonist or the person who's coming and saving the day will always be a woman. Will always be a woman. You know, there was uh, in 2015, 16 something, I don't remember the exact year, 17, 18, uh, Deepika Palikal, who was a squash player, she won a bronze in uh, uh, Asian Games. Okay. Uh, you know, one of the prominent newspapers, I'm not going to play, name the newspaper over here. One of the most prominent newspapers in the country uh, had a headline on the sports page. You know, what was the headline? Dinesh Karthik's wife wins bronze. For that. That's so sad. So that actually got us. Well, that was the actually, uh, if you see in my mind, since I've been with this brand for almost 10 years now, was a trigger point in my mind. It, you know, we have to do something. I'll send you that clip. So we put out a small, short as a small video on that. Uh, I'll send you that clip. It's a fantastic clip. We only questioned this thinking from Deepika's angle. And over a period of time, consistently, uh, we have used females as our customers to show in our communication. A large part of our communication, which normally doesn't come out, but is fairly internal in nature because it's targeted at our sellers. Almost all of the communication, the seller is always a woman. Seller is always a woman. Okay. Uh, over a period of time, what it has helped us, number one, obviously, to create a niche for ourselves. Number two, uh, you know, as brands, you have to take a stand. You cannot be a fence sitter or you cannot play safe every time. You have to take a stand. 
and that's the stand we have taken. I don't know how long we'll be able to stick to it, but hopefully we will be. You know, you spoke about evolutions and we spoke about your marketing strategies. So how has your media mix also evolved in the recent past? So media mix, the deciding principle is fairly simple. We will be where the customers are. Very clearly. If customer wants to see us in a medium like TV, we will be on TV. But my personal opinion now is, uh, especially from TV, is becoming very, very fragmented. Okay. With the plethora of options available. In order to do justice, to reach out to a substantial number of customers, I don't think any one uh, genre or any one uh, dominant player is there for us to be partnering with. At the same time of time, consumers have moved on. Consumers have moved on to fairly digital. The attention spans have gone down. Consumers have moved to digital mediums. And therefore, progressively, we have also followed where consumers have moved. So primarily these days, our focus is to create awareness, to create consideration using digital mediums. Now, gradually I'm seeing the fragmentation happening in digital mediums also. So how far will it go in future? Probably I don't have an answer for that. But yes, that remains to be seen. Uh, you know, you mentioned the digital medium and uh, nowadays the marketing buzzword is personalization and hyper-personalization. But one example of that could also be looked at as, you know, your agents, which play a key role in this sector, uh, in the insurance sector. So how has the digital, uh, uh, you know, the onset of digital impacted this, uh, this entire community? Oh, digital has been a huge enabler in this. Huge enabler. Because suppose I am an agent and I want to um, offer a, a product to Simran. I will obviously have to customize it to Simran, uh, taking Simran's age, uh, current uh, uh, status in terms of finance, current status in terms of health and everything put together. Then I will customize a solution and offer it to Simran. Now, uh, in the earlier days when digital was not so much prevalent, I did not have that ability to offer it to Simran, number one. And continue changing it to because Simran might say, no, don't do this, do this to me and offer me something else. Now with digital tools, my advisors can reach out to Simran effectively because I know the platform that Simran goes to, take Simran's consent and then approach her directly. Understand, make her go through a journey, what we call it is a need analysis journey. That this is where I am, this is where I want to go. And then arrive at a decision or a product or a solution for Simran, everything happening digitally, everything happening digitally. And then Simran deciding to buy it and completing the journey also on digital at uh, probably just sitting wherever you are. Now digital has enabled these kind of interactions. NATO, otherwise insurance is a 75 year old industry. For all these years, the agents were used to selling face to face. Correct. But now with digital, we have solutions available where we can do the same thing by meeting customers virtually by using tools like whatsapp by using personalization tools some which have developed internally to offer products to so i believe a huge enabler digital has been for us to in our journey towards personalization uh, how do you ensure a consistent communication and brand image across all various platforms now which is a seamless and engaging, uh, which provides a seamless and engaging consumer experience? So, uh, it's easier said than done. Theoretically, it is very easy to say this thing that consumer should see a unified and consistent brand across all the platforms that are there. Unfortunately, what happens is because of multiplicity of platforms, multiplicity of people handling it, multiplicity of tools which are available to service those platforms, the consistency might go for a toss. So what we do is we try to create what is called as a center, a command center at our uh, office where all the communication flows through that. Uh, while that works, to a certain extent, are we fully 100% in that? Hand on heart, no. 
I still come across communication, which should not the most ideal one and which, but still has slipped and went to customers. So it's again, as I was talking earlier, it's an evolution. It's an evolution because time and again, new tools keep on emerging and you have to ensure that your communication remains native to those tools as well as native to other tools. But uh, it's simple, but it's not easy. Now, you know, you also are in a sector which is uh, significantly impacted by policy changes, right? I just want to know, uh, how has the last budget, which was presented last month, how does this, how has it impacted your current marketing strategy? So, uh, last budget, not so much, because anyway, it was not a full budget, it was a vote on account. Correct. Uh, but the budget before that, which is the budget which was presented in 23 February, mm-hmm. that had a huge impact on overall industry. Uh, in that budget, uh, so insurance was a financial uh, instrument which had a huge tax arbitrage. So all the proceeds that come from insurance. Uh, of the savings plan of the ULIPS or even uh, term policies, they were uh, actually, there was no tax on them. But an industry actually used that very well from time to time. Although tax saving is not the right reason to buy insurance, insurance you should buy as per your need, whether your need is protection or your need is wealth creation, accordingly you should buy insurance. But tax was also being used, one of the tools, tax saving, to sell insurance. In the last budget, it was announced that uh, for uh, products which had what we typically call as money back plans, okay, uh, in those only up to 5 lakhs, premium worth 5 lakhs, was the returns from those policies was uh, tax free. If your premium goes beyond 5 lakhs, uh, then the returns will be taxed at the tax rate of the particular individual. Now, this was actually a huge, uh, uh, this thing, a change for the industry. Uh, But what it did for us, number one is, uh, you know, insurance and uh, insurance is a game of retail. You know, you can, you have to reach out to multiple number of people. The moment so what did it impact the budget? The budget impacted high ticket sizes for anybody who was buying an insurance by paying a premium more than 5 lakh rupees. So that means high ticket sizes, they got impacted because they no longer enjoyed the tax arbitrage. So industry was forced to probably look at newer avenues of more retailization. Yeah. I need to go to, as an industry, we need to go to more retail uh, person rather than focusing on HNIs or high ticket cases. Uh, so that's industry has done very well. I think that now we also we believe probably 5 lakh could have been too harsh. It uh, should have been close to 10 lakh rupees for us to do justice equally. But 5 lakh is the regulation. So 5 lakh is the regulation. But it has really helped us to do uh, spread our wings further in terms of going to more retail customers. Having said that, even after spite of this budget, this limit of 5 lakhs, Insurance remains the only instrument, financial instrument, that has this tax benefit which is available. So consumers should take that into account as well when they are planning for their uh, needs and doing their financial plan. But despite all these efforts, insurance is still an underpenetrated sector in India. So how do you see what is the opportunity for growth? If you can just give us some idea. So India is a huge market and India is a market uh, which is growing and India is currently on a growth path. We just had our uh, quarter GDP, quarter growth numbers which had come in, which have come in and which have actually surpassed all expectations. So this kind of growth we will continue to see. So the growth is going to be there. When the growth comes, there's always a need for protection that keeps on going up. And that is where insurance comes in. Insurance also comes where a need for wealth creation through a sustained, disciplined focus needs to come in. That's where insurance will come in. So from a potential wise, there's a huge market for life insurance. Uh, 
our regulator IRDA has taken upon a mission on itself, which is called as insurance for all by 2047, which means uh, IRDA wants entire country to get insured. And when I say insurance, it's not just life insurance, I want life, general, everything. But IRDA wants every Indian to be insured by 2047, which itself shows the intent. The intent is that insurance should reach to the last mile, to the last person of this country. So we have a regulatory intent, we have a regulatory push that is available. Uh, but I believe while penetration is fine and that is definitely we all need to push, one of the largest dangers that we all face in our lives as consumers is also under insurance. Hmm. So I might still have insurance for me and therefore I will not be part of the cohort which is uh, where insurance is not penetrated. But do I have enough insurance? Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, I, I have one of my favorite exercises when I meet a lot of people is in a room, I will ask how many of them are insured. Most of the hands go up because everybody has some sort of insurance. Then my next question is how many think of you have adequate insurance? Hardly one or two percent of hands go up at that point of time. Even while people working within our company who are working in life insurance industry, we ourselves probably might be underinsured from time to time. So we as a country should also look at that part. Insurance for the sake of insurance doesn't do justice. Because ultimately, let's take an example, a term insurance. At a very basic level, term insurance is income replacement, which means if the particular individual is no longer there, will the insurance amount suffice to take care of the family who is left behind, maintaining the same standards of living what they are currently having. So it's an income replacement. Now the problem is, as we move up in life, our income keeps on going up. But suppose I have bought insurance three years back, my income has gone up uh, some percentage points in these three years. My insurance has not been upgraded. Okay, so typically it stops becoming an income replacement. It is not a replacement. It takes care of some part of the income. And we don't upgrade our insurance so frequently. So that is probably what needs to be taken into account. So yes, penetration is important, but under insurance is very important. And industry is really working hard under this IRDI project of insurance for all. And in, I think Regulator has done a very good job that they have given one state to every life insurer and said in this state you have to promote life insurance to the last mile. That is your job, you are the lead insurer. So suddenly the workload gets divided. The regulator also doesn't have a workload. One insurance company, one state, in apart from your normal business, you also need to focus on this state to promote life insurance. So all these steps, uh, regulator is trying to bring a platform in place where customers can neutrally evaluate all products in one place. Uh, regulator is also working on a combined product which is health plus life uh, at an entry level which then can use to spread the penetration of insurance. So if you see platform, product, distribution, everything is being put in place. So I see the penetration to go up substantially as years go by. Okay. Now you had mentioned that, uh, you know, last quarter, the numbers exceeded your expectations. So if you could give us an idea, how has the year so far been for Edelweiss Tokyo Life Insurance? And what are your expectations from this crucial Jan, Feb, March quarter? The numbers have been good. We are uh, growing. Uh, we are growing at a decent pace as compared to last year. If you remember, if you actually need to see last year, because of the tax announcement which came in February, there was a huge artificial push and urgency created in the month of Feb and March because uh, the big ticket cases were told that the tax benefit will no longer be available from 1st of April. So buy it now, buy it now. So there was a huge uh, spike that had come in, which was over and above the normal spike that comes in Feb and March. Uh, 
Now this year that spike is no longer available, but still uh, we have been able to better our numbers as compared to last year, which shows that uh, we have been growing at a decent pace. Industry is fully geared. There is enough demand in this thing. I think we will till end of the year with very decent numbers. And finally, the trends that you sh- believe will shape the marketing for the insurance sector as a whole. So one trend you already talked about, Simran, which was personalization. Because ultimately, insurance is a very personal product. You buy it to uh, as per your current situation and as per your aspiration. So the industry will continue to move towards personalization. That is one trend that I will definitely, and that is bound to happen. Second is, uh, you know, which has been uh, continuing for some years, and I see this to continue, which is the uh, vernacularization. Okay. People would like to consume content in the language that is closest to them. No longer can we hide behind that plain English and plain Hindi. We have to talk in the languages of the customers. Uh, While it is easier to say like this, to create content on a consistent basis to cater to all the 29 states in the country is is a humongous task. Is a humongous task. And then you add the regulatory layer to it. Because whatever you are telling customers needs to fully regulatory compliant. It becomes very difficult in vernacular languages. So that is a challenge that industry is facing, but I think, uh, so that trend will continue moving towards vernacularization. Um, I see uh, a trend of, uh, you know, we have this trend of so-called influencers. Uh, We started with mega influencers, then we had influencers, then we have mini influencers, now we have micro influencers. Anybody who has a, camera and can do something whether it is song dance or anything or just do lip syncing tries to call themselves an influencer Uh, so my take on that is uh, it's a fad very soon only genuine people who actually are creating content which is really worth consuming will stay in the business otherwise else gradually people will fizzle out so this fad of Creating content just for the sake of creating content will go away. So that is the third thing that I see. It might take one or two years definitely, but it's going to go away. That is the third trend. The fourth trend that I see is that entire fervor of nationalism in the country. Okay. Uh, In spite of elections being this year and uh, in the beginning of this year, I'm talking about financial year. And then most of the financial year, we would have a next government in place, right? But this fervor of nationalism is going to continue. People and brands would, from time to time, take up the national plan and ride on this feeling of pride that is riding in all of us right now. It is also coupled with the direction that the country is taking right now because we all are extremely optimistic about the growth prospects of the country. Uh, the youth of the country in terms of a very young population that we have. So because of that, uh, this pro-India or this nationalism is going to be around at least for this more year as a part of communication and trend. That is you know, four, I am going to say is, uh, and from a media perspective that I see, uh, you know, something called as appointment viewing is going to go away completely, gradually, not this year, but gradually. So all those TV channels which have a scheduled programs, you know, we anyway have most of the TV channels now have their own digital arms as well. So the appointment viewing where the broadcaster decides you will watch when will continue to going down and uh, customers will want to watch when they want to watch. Only in case of sports will appointment viewing continue because that's the nature of the business. Uh, I continue to see cricket rising and rising and rising at the expense of other sports. Okay. So that is going to happen. Uh, we are going to see multiple formats more coming. We already have other than IPL Women Premier League, which is now gradually gaining ground. Today we have started those uh, tennis cricket ball league or something. 
So you will see various other formats coming on and therefore, yes, that's the need of our, we need and League of India, which is probably the best in the world and IPL is already towards that. So that will continue. Uh, India's uh, love for films is going to go to a different level. It is going to go a different level. We will very soon see a birth of mega, mega uh, celebrities who are loved across the world, not just by Indians across the world, by world citizens across the world. We will see rise of these kind of stars coming in. And uh, so India's, so, and please uh, take into mind that I am not saying Bollywood, I am saying film industry. Because the film industry has transitioned from being Bollywood centric to now coming to the entire India. So that trend is going to continue. We will, although in COVID, we were thinking that the rise of the mega celebrities is gone now. But no, I think that is the mega celebrities were becoming even mega. So those things will continue. Uh, these are the few trends that I can think. Uh, personalization I talked about. Uh, the other thing that is going to stay and that is probably marketers will continue doing is the uniformity or standard. You mentioned it, Simran, about consistency, how consistency can be maintained across various platforms. Uh, which is a very difficult thing to do, which is a very difficult thing to do. And the last trend I would like to is for industries like us, which are heavily dependent upon distributors. Uh, companies will continue to focus more on distributor, creating a brand of preference for distributors. So companies like us, companies like paints industry, a lot of industries are heavily dependent on distributors. So those industries will actually create a lot of engaging content platforms everything for distributors programs for distributors and overall the distributor marketing as a concept will keep on growing thank you so much abhishek it was lovely talking to you and very very insightful thank you so much again for taking time out from your busy schedule thank you Simran. thank you Simran. all pleasure was all mine